Today, we're gonna make this. Hi, how's it going? My name is Sebastian, and in this video, I'm gonna show you step by step how to make a smart doorbell like this. Even though I call it smart, I'm not a big fan of this term. Even car wipers are smart these days. That's why I wanted to call it video doorbell. But short form didn't sound... right. Anyway, I based my project on this popular guy. ESP32 CAM board. If you want, you can use it to create something similar. Of course, this will require a bit creativity from you. For me, an excuse to design my PCB is enough. I can put any component exactly where I want and avoid those tangled cables, which I hate. Besides, designing a nicer looking enclosure this way is so much easier. So, what exactly do we need? The ESP32 module. It will be central unit of our doorbell. It is a big brother of the ESP8266 chip, which wouldn't be able to process the image from the camera. Speaking of which, a camera. You can use classic one like this, or that one, with a fisheye lens. It's a bit more expensive, but you can see a lot more with it. To open wicked door, gate or whatever, we need a relay. Like this, for example. It is probably the easiest way to power up a solenoid lock. Close. Open. A switching DC-DC converter. There's a 12 volts in my smart installation, but 24 is probably even more popular. That's why I choose not to use a cheap LDO and use that one instead. It has broad range of input voltages and higher efficiency. Therefore, it won't heat up as much. And last but not least, of non-obvious components. It is a PSRAM. If you need a greater resolution than 800x600, you need more memory than ESP module has. I'll not use such a high resolution in this project though, but I wanted to leave myself an option for upgrades. And that's it. The rest of the components are pretty standard. Let's go straight to designing a PCB. Ready PCB look like this. That black solder mask. Love it. I'll be doing all my project in this color from now. Just connect your camera and touch button and you are ready to go. Now let's talk about integration with Home Assistant. If you are using different system like Domotic or OpenHub, we can skip to the part where I'm talking about the enclosure. Here I'll focus on the smart system I've used the most and I know the best, but I'm sure you can also use this kind of device in your system of choice. Before we start, a more detailed description you can find on my website, 
Link below. I described then how to integrate this kind of smart doorbell with Home Assistant. You'll also find a complete pack of source files, including configuration file for ESP Home. I assume your Home Assistant and ESP Home are up and running, and you have a basic knowledge how to program an ESP chip. If not, I've covered this topic on my website. Check it out. Ok, let's start by adding a new device. Select generic ESP32 as a device type. ESP Home generates the initial file structure automatically. You just need to add the configuration for all your toys. Luckily, you don't have to write this from scratch. You can open and copy the file I provide on my website. It's a complete configuration for all peripherals. If you are using ESP32 CAM board, you need to make sure that the button, LEDs and the relay are connected to the same pins as mine. If not, just correct it. Since we are using a touch button in this device, you have to do one more thing. Calibrate it. But you can do it after mounting the PCB in the housing, not before. Therefore, for now, let's compile the project as it is and program the chip. For the very first time, we have to use the USB UART adapter. Fortunately, every future update we can do via Wi Fi over the air. Now, let's prepare an automation that will send notification to our smartphone when someone presses the button on the doorbell. Unfortunately, it looks entirely different for iOS and Android users. But in both cases, installing the Home Assistant Companion app will be the first step. Let's start with the iPhone. The first automation will be responsible for sending the live view from the camera to the phone. The name isn't that important, but it's nice if it describes the automation role. It's easier to navigate later when we have a lot of them. As a trigger, we'll set pressing our touch button. And here we'll set what actually happened when somebody presses the button. Now we can save it. If you want, like me, to use your smartphone to activate the relay, in the main configuration file, add two possible actions in case of getting notification. Let in and ignore seems to cover all possibilities. But if you have any other ideas, you can add them here. The final step is to add another automation for each action we just entered. But if we ignore our guest, we don't need to do anything. Therefore, we'll do only one automation. This time, the trigger is an event with the let in action ID. The ID must be the same as the one we entered in the configuration file. And finally, we turn on the switch connected to the relay in our doorbell. From now on you have a choice. You can let him in or not. Now let's talk about Android. Just like in iOS, let's start with creating a new automation. When the doorbell button is pressed, do these two actions. The order in this case is crucial. First we need to save the camera picture in the local storage. And then we'll send this picture in the notification to our phone. Additionally, we'll add all actions here. Let in and ignore. To be able to save a picture, we must add the location to the whitelist. We can do it in the main configuration file. Just add these two lines. Now let's create the last automation. It will turn on the relay if we decide to let our visitor in. 
the notification should look something like this. Software part is almost ready. There's still calibration left, but we'll lose it later. Now let's make a beautiful and professional looking case for our doorbell. Let's make it our pride and joy. case is assembled. It's time to calibrate a touch button. Let's go back to the ESP Home configuration file. I would like to focus on one specific part of this code. The threshold value determines when the touch button is considered to be pressed. It has to be selected experimentally. To do this, we need to enable setup mode. Now, in the log we'll see current values read by the ESP chip. Let's do some tests now. In our case, there's an acrylic sheet between the button and the finger. It reduces the sensitivity by a lot. But we can use it anyway. Based on these values, we can determine the threshold. It should be exactly in between. In my case, I set 1100. Our button is calibrated and ready to use. Let's disable the setup mode. The final stage remains. Let's mount the doorbell, in my case on the fence, and check if it works. time for a demo. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe button, because more projects like this coming up soon.